Thanks, you guys. That was a beautiful song to set up the message. Come, Holy Spirit, fall afresh on me. Take a look at the person sitting next to you and say, you're looking good today. <laughs> tell them that. Tell the, tell the person on the other side of you the same thing. All of you are looking good today. All right, I want to see how sharp you are. If you were here last week, I mentioned that there are four words that God has kind of directed my heart to over the course of the summer and that we're focusing on right now this fall. Who can name one of those words? Prayer. I heard prayer. That's one of them. What's another one? Power. That's another one. Fruitfulness. You're cheating. She took notes. She's on her phone. By the way, the, the notes are on your uh, Grace Church app there. All right, we've got prayer, power, fruitfulness, worship. worship. There you go. Those four. And they all tie together. They're not just random four words. As we worship, as we pray... God is able to flow his power into our lives and through our lives and that results in bearing fruit. The fruit we're talking about is twofold. It's the fruit of how we live our own lives so that we live our lives more in a reflection of the character of Christ. We become more Christ-like. We're, we're, I'm not there yet but Paul says that's the goal to strive towards maturity in Christ so and what that means is that we we show the same qualities the fruit of the spirit that's described in the New Testament the fruit of the spirit is not a singular fruit but it's got several different attributes love joy peace patience kindness goodness gentleness and self-control when we are showing more and more of that in our lives we're bearing fruit but there's the other way to bear fruit like Aaron was talking about just a moment ago where we share with other people who have not yet come into this experience of knowing Christ we share that reality in a way that God uses then to touch their heart with his Holy Spirit and bring them to faith and when they step into that life that's a new child of God. That's bearing fruit. So we want that kind of fruitfulness here in Grace Church through your witness, through your sharing, through living your lives in a manner that is worthy of the gospel of Christ. To do that, to bear fruit, we need the power. The power of God's presence in our lives to give us the grace and the strength to live each and every aspect of life in our homes with our families, out in the workplace, in the school, in the community, or wherever God may lead us. The passages that we looked at last week that call us to this idea of, of being empowered begins with what Jesus says to the disciples on the same night he was risen from the dead on that first Easter Sunday. He, he, he comes to them and he says this, I am going to send you what my Father has promised. Now, what was promised is what he talked about just uh, three nights earlier in John chapter 14, that he would send someone to be with them after Jesus has gone back to the Father, another comforter. I'm going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city right here in Jerusalem until you have been clothed with what? Power from on high. Then Jesus reiterates this uh, about 40 days later, just before he does ascend back to heaven. He says in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, but you will receive what? There it is. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Then Paul goes on and picks up on this idea in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. He says, I pray that according to the riches of his glory, 
he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with what? Power through his spirit. If Philippians 4.13 is a verse uh, many of us uh, keep close to heart and mind. I can endure all these things through the power of the one who gives me strength. Colossians 1.11, we also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power so you will have all the endurance and patience you need to live life. And 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11, so we keep on praying for you, asking our God to enable you to live a life worthy of his call. May he give you the power to accomplish all the good things your faith prompts you to do. Would you pray with me, please? God, as we look at the source of our power today, may you open up our minds to recognize the truth, the message that you have for us. May you open up our hearts to embrace it and open up our wills to do it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We don't have time this morning, but I, I want to remind you, as a part of our prayer, we've done our worship here together. I want you to take the um, blue prayer guide that's in your bulletin. Don't put that in the recycle bin with the rest of the papers, but take this home. Keep it handy. Read it. Let it speak to you, and let it guide your prayers for the church, for yourself. The one side has a prayer that uh, suggests how we can pray for the church and one another. The other side has topics to look at. So use that. That's part of our emphasis on prayer. I'll have Grace mention something else at the end of the service about a Wednesday night opportunity for you to come together to pray. We're going to be emphasizing prayer. We're going to be doing worship so that we can have the power. Now, the reason we need the power is because each and every one of us is deployed on a mission. We are called into Christ's service as followers, as disciples, as believers. And we are deployed on a mission, just as a, a, a military regiment is assigned to be at a certain place to do a certain mission in uh, their service. You are deployed to be Christ's person, to be Christ's disciple to be Christ's woman or Christ's man, to be Christ's boy or Christ's girl, where you are right now in your community, in your family, in your career, in your school, or wherever God may send you, that's where you are deployed to live out your life as a faithful witness to Christ. And to do that, we need God's power to do God's mission for our life. Now, as we look at the life of Jesus, it's a model for us. And Jesus was here in this world on a mission. Now, certainly, he had a unique, truly unique mission, a mission that only he could do, and that is to go to the cross for us. But in the process, he also had the mission of showing us how a born-again person lives, how a follower of Christ lives his life. Now, from the very beginning, when it was first announced to Jesus who, who would be Jesus' mother, Mary. It was, announced, it was announced to her that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and overshadow you and you will conceive. So from the very beginning, Jesus' life is spirit-empowered. All through his childhood, through the years that prepared him to embark on his ministry. And then when he was baptized and he began to go and, and preach... Before he did that, he uh, went into the wilderness area to be alone to wrestle with how to go about fulfilling the calling, the mission that God the Father had for him. And when he came back from that experience of 40 days uh, alone in the wilderness, battling the temptations that Satan came to him with, it says in Luke chapter 4, verse 14, then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit returned to Galilee 
And a report about him spread through all the surrounding country because he began to preach in astonishing ways and he began to do amazing things. Later on in that chapter, Luke chapter 4, verse 36, it says, All the people were amazed and they said to each other, What words these are. With authority and power, he gives orders to impure spirits and they come out. The next chapter, Luke chapter 5, verse 17, it says, One day Jesus was teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and from Jerusalem, and, and the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Now that phrase, the power of the Lord, the Lord refers to God. That's another uh, way of addressing God, the Father. The power of God was with Jesus to heal the sick. Luke chapter 11, verse 20, Jesus says this, but if I'm throwing out demons by the power of God, then God's kingdom has already arrived on the scene. It has overtaken you. So throughout here, we see Jesus is empowered from the Father by the Spirit. Now, one of the things that we struggle to understand is if Jesus is a part of the Godhead Father, Son, Holy Spirit and he has come to earth doesn't he already have that power within him to just do what he wants but Paul seeks to explain this for us in Philippians chapter 2 when he says that when Jesus did come into the earth part of the miracle of the incarnation it's not this, just that God, the creator of the world, has come in and become a part of his creation. That's like the author of a play, a musical, writing himself into the musical himself and becoming a part of that. But, but it says, Paul says, when Jesus did come into the world, he set aside his divine prerogatives and powers in other words Jesus came into the world to live life on our own terms and because he did that he can model for us what it means to live in the power of God the Father and the power of the Holy Spirit because he made himself dependent on the same power does that make sense and so Jesus says in Luke chapter 22, verse 29, And I confer royal power on you, just as my Father granted royal power to me. In other words, Jesus says, The power to do what I've done throughout my life and ministry has come from the Father. That same power is going to be conferred upon you. And that leads us to what we've read last week and read just earlier uh, this morning what Jesus told the disciples I'm going to send you what my father has promised but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high you're going to need this power to do the work that you're going to be assigned to do these remaining disciples they were going to de be deployed on a mission to carry the news of Jesus throughout the whole Roman world at that time and tradition says that 10 of those 11 were martyred in the process of carrying out that mission. They had the power, the fortitude to do it because of the spirit that was within them. I'm going to send you the power. Wait until you have it. And in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. That leads us to the main point of the message. This is all you need to take home with you. The source of Jesus' power is the source of your power. God has promised. Jesus has delivered the promise. That power of his spirit is available to us if we make ourselves available to it. Because you see, for God's power to be effective in our lives we have to get our lives into alignment with him 
with his will so that the power that God gives us to live our life, to overcome challenges, to, to deal with adversities, to, to deal with some of the difficulties that this life brings our way, to deal with, to be able to handle the, uh, the tasks, the assignments that God gives some of us to do, to go onto an Ohio State campus and challenge that environment that says there is no God. It takes power. It takes God's power. The source of Jesus' power is the source of your power. Or to put it another way, you have the same source of power available to you that Jesus had available to him. We mentioned last week how the New Testament talks about different aspects and dimensions of this power we need the endurance power that Paul talks about I can endure all things through the strength of the one who empowers me that endurance to, to, to face up to difficult and testing experiences in life many of us have gone through them already all of us will go through some of them some, at some point that endurance power God gives us there's also the power to comprehend the ability to grasp with our minds things that are beyond human understanding, that surpass knowledge, the knowledge of God, who he is, his love for us, what he's done for humanity, that power to comprehend. We talked about the power to live, the power to just live our lives day in and day out with get, without giving in to the temptations that come, without compromising uh, what we know in our heart and what we believe uh, about Christ the power to live a life worthy of the name that we bear as Christian and then the power to do we, we, we reminded you of what Jesus said in John chapter 14 when he says you know you, you, you've come to believe in me because you've seen the, the things that I've done these works that I've done have, have um, convinced you that I come from the Father but even greater works than these you will do, Jesus said. Say what? We can do that? When and where we need to, God will empower us to do what we need to do. Power to do even greater things. Each of these areas of power, endurance, comprehension, living the life, doing the deeds, these come to us by the Holy Spirit at work within us. We began the year with the theme, just follow. Jesus invites all of us, come, follow me. And we spent a number of weeks through the winter and through the spring looking at what it means to follow Christ and different aspects of that life of being a Christ follower, a disciple. And our subtitle for that just follow is living the life you were created for. But to do that, to just follow, to live a life we, we were created for requires power beyond ourselves. It requires more than any of us have within us to do it. And that's what our message is this morning. That power is available to us. The power we need when we need it. But it's a power that we don't control it's a power we yield to to let God bring his strength and power through our lives in the way that we need it I was reading last night the passage in 2 Corinthians where the Apostle Paul is talking about some of the amazing experiences that he's been through he talks about all that he's endured in service to Christ. You know, he was shipwrecked a number of times at, out in the open sea for like three nights in a row. He, he was beaten severely four or five times. He was even stoned, and he survived that. Not uh, this kind of stone, but, you know, where they threw rocks at him. He survived that. And he talked about some of the revelations that he had where God enabled him in, in, in visions or whatever to, to see uh, the future glory. And he says, 
so that I would not become conceited and arrogant about what I have done for Christ and what I've seen and experienced. He says, I was given a thorn in my body. We call it a thorn in the flesh. Uh, some kind of ailment that l limited him because of the outstanding revelations I received so that I wouldn't be conceited I pleaded with the Lord three times for it to leave me alone and he said to me my grace is enough for you because power is made perfect in weakness what's that mean power is made perfect in weakness we best see God's power in us when we're most aware of our need of it, of our inadequacy. And so Paul goes on to say, he says, so I'll gladly spend my time bragging about my weaknesses so that Christ's power can rest on me. Therefore, I'm all right with weakness, insults, disasters, harassments, and stressful situations for the sake of Christ because when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Because then I'm fully dependent on God. Fully allowing Him to live in and through me. The power that God provides us is available to us as we seek it. As Jesus told the disciples, wait for it. And as we receive it. And allow God to pour out His grace in our daily lives. I'd love to hear from you if you could take the time sometime this week, shoot me an email or give me a phone call and just share with me how you have seen God's presence and his power at work in the various situations and circumstances of your life. Would you pray with me, please? God, thank you that you promise the power to live the life that you call us to because what you call us to is it's, it's beyond what any of us are able to accomplish. To live that life that models after Christ, that's, that's too much to do in myself, but through your power, through your ability, we can endure all things. We can comprehend the end surpassable we can do the things you call us to thank you Lord for that promise of power may we experience it in our lives this week as we worship as we pray in Christ's name amen